Elizabethan England was dangerous, ruthless, violent and unstable. The Queen had inherited the religious turmoil brought about by her father, Henry VIII's religious reformation, and Elizabeth, as the daughter of Anne Boleyn, and as a Protestant, was for Catholics both home and abroad illegitimate, as a person, and as a Queen. A heretic, placing themselves and their country in service of the devil. 1570 Pope Pius V excommunicates Elizabeth. This gives the green light to 40,000 English Catholics, as well as the governments of Catholic France and Spain, to kill her. In this video we will look at the several attempts on Queen Elizabeth's life, and the clandestine warfare waged by her courtiers against them. We delve into a dark world of spies, intrigue, codes and ciphers, of double agents, and murder. Elizabeth was the target her entire life. In response, high-ranking officials such as William Cecil and Francis Walsingham developed sophisticated networks of spies, informants, forgers and code-breakers. They bribed the servants of influential Catholics in England and abroad, paid European merchants for information from the continent, and employed Catholic priests to spy on their brethren. In 1571 the network brought news that Pope Pius V had raised funds for the invasion of England and assassination of Elizabeth. An agent for the plot, Charles Bailey, had been arrested in the southern English port of Dover, carrying concealed letters from the Spanish government with details of the plot. He is taken to the Tower of London, but refuses to divulge what he knows. Meanwhile, Cambridge mathematicians working for Cecil break the coded letters and reveal their contents. But there remains a key mystery. Who were the letters addressed to? Who is the traitor at the centre of the plot? Who is codename 40? During Charles Bailey's long stay, he befriends a Catholic prisoner in the next cell, and eventually to him reveals that Forty is an important man. He is, in fact, a lord of the realm. Unbeknownst to Bailey, the man in the next cell is an actor, working for William Cecil. The breakthrough comes when two men are arrested in Shrewsbury, transporting coded letters and £600 of gold an astonishing sum, enough to fund the invasion. The two admit that they are working for Thomas Howard, the Duke of Norfolk. Agents for the Crown search Norfolk's home, and find the code cipher hidden in his Bible. As well as being a staunch Catholic, the richest man in England, and a keen tennis player, Norfolk is also a cousin of Elizabeth and it is for this reason that the Queen is reluctant to sign his death warrant. Cecil becomes increasingly frustrated. Norfolk simply must die. By October, a scandal sheet begins to circulate naming Norfolk as the ringleader of a plot to kill Elizabeth. The public are enraged and call for Norfolk's head. Eventually, Elizabeth accepts the inevitable and in June 1572, Norfolk is beheaded. The author of the pamphlet is anonymous. However, it comes from a printing press run by Cecil. John Somerville is arrested after announcing plans to enter court and shoot the Queen. William Parry MP, having received his priest's blessing, is caught before being able to assassinate the Queen in the palace gardens. In 1583, Sir Francis Throckmorton, yet another disaffected Catholic, plans for France to invade England, the murder of Elizabeth, and the usurpation of another to the throne. He too is caught in the spymaster's web, arrested, convicted, and executed. It is this last detail, however, that is of most concern. The person each conspirator hopes to succeed Elizabeth to the throne 
her Catholic cousin, Mary, Queen of Scots. An ultimately tragic figure, Mary, having been suspected in the murder of her late husband, who died after two barrels of gunpowder exploded underneath his bedchamber whilst he slept, was hounded out of Scotland by her Protestant subjects and held under house arrest in England. As a figurative, if not outright leader of plots to kill Elizabeth, Mary was a huge problem for the English court. As a queen, they could not simply kill her, although many in the English court advocated as such, usually after yet another plot to assassinate the queen and insert Mary as monarch had been thwarted. And they could not banish her abroad, where she could then gather support for an invasion. The answer, of course, was to entrap her in a treasonous plot, one in which she herself was the ringleader, with her consent written on paper, evidence enough for her legitimate execution. And this is just what Walsingham and Cecil do. By June 1586, they have Anthony Babington, a young Catholic gentleman too naive and cocksure to compete with the intelligence and ingenuity of Elizabeth's spymasters. It is their agents who create the lines of communication between Babington and the desperate and embittered Mary. Their agent who delivers the encrypted messages between the two, a brewer codenamed Honest Man. Although, of course, in both instances both Mary and Babington think these people are working for them. And so in July 1586, when Babington sends Mary a letter detailing how he and his six associates plan to assassinate Elizabeth, a letter which has already been intercepted, copied, decoded and read by Walsingham and his team, and Mary responds with the immortal phrase, set the six gentlemen to work. She has effectively signed her own death warrant. The agent responsible for the operation draws a picture of a gallows in the corner of the copy he sends to Walsingham, just to stress the obvious. And so, with her trial a mere formality, she wasn't even allowed lawyers in her own defence. Mary is duly convicted and executed on the 8th of February, 1587. She takes to the stage in a scarlet red dress, the colours of a Catholic martyr, although any plans at a dignified death end there. The executioner needing several blows before eventually severing her neck. Then, not realising Mary was wearing a wig, loses grip and drops her head onto the straw-covered floor. Mary's West Highland Terrier rushes out from under her blood-stained dress and begins barking at it. Two of those in attendance find the spectacle too much and proceed to have a nervous breakdown. But for the spymasters in the employ of Elizabeth, it is a job well done. An existential threat to the body of the Queen eliminated. Further trials, of course, were to come. Three Spanish armadas in 1588, 1596 and 1597 not to mention the frankly ludicrous rebellion of the Earl of Essex, once a favourite courtier of Elizabeth, who in February 1601 marched through London with 300 men in an attempt to take Elizabeth captive. He's ambushed, arrested and beheaded, thwarted by the double crossings, intrigue, brilliance of those at the heart of Elizabeth's court. She remained on the English throne for 45 years and died of natural causes, age 69. Thanks for listening. If you like this, subscribe and comment below.